Powered by Go Goat Sports in partnership with TSN, this is Season 4. It is Episode 9 of the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast, and it's presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey. You've been patient. Get ready for it. The final release of their Chronicle series, the 45-year-old Canadian Club, is almost here. You can taste it. It will be available everywhere very shortly. And, uh, Ray, we're both very much, very much looking forward to it. Yeah, big fan, Dregs. You know, uh, I think the coolest part of our um, connection with Canadian Club, for me anyway, is that I had no previous bias. I had no idea, really. And just mm-hmm. got to learn a little bit through Tish and the gang at Canadian Club. And I've really enjoyed getting to know about it. And it is delicious. I love it. It is. It'll wrap up the Chronicle series. So look forward to it in an LCBO near you coming shortly. Uh, we're going to get to headlines here momentarily, Ray, but you know, you're a golf fanatic. You play a lot. <clears throat> Very good player. Yep. Um, so season winding down here and, and in your area of Vancouver as well. Uh, played with three buddies a week and change ago. Uh, it was yep. a beautiful day, Royal Ashburn Golf Club here in the Durham region in Ontario. Finishing up on 18, my one buddy is, I'd say, 20 yards right of the 18th green. So there's a bit okay. of a berm there, but, you know, he can he can see the green. It's an expansive green, large green. My other buddy is on the far left of the green. So okay. he's probably two paces off the fringe. Um, not sure. I guess he wasn't paying attention. But the buddy on the far right just skulls. Uh, a, a, a lob wedge, right? He's trying to Uh-oh. just bump and run this thing. Hits a liner off the sole of the club, and he screams, "Look out!" You know, I mean, you're not going to scream four when you're like forty yards apart. He's like, "Look out!" <laughs> and right. what's your initial instinct when you don't know where the ball is coming from? Well, you, you know where around, it's coming right? from. You just yeah. can't put eyes on it. Yeah. Well, you either move or you duck, right? So he covers his head. Ducks and takes it right in the side of the head. Like right he had a cap on, but in the hole where oh, the, the strap is, come on. That's where he took that line drive. Is he all right? And automatically, like well he yeah, it turns out he's all right. But automatically you want to burst into laughter because it's so absurdly ridiculous. That this just happened. That stuff happens not all the time, thankfully. But if you're a hundred yards, two hundred yards away from someone, and you're getting anxious, you hit the ball, you hit it left, you hit it right. You know, you scream four, and hopefully it doesn't hit somebody, but it does. I mean, that's unfortunately part of the game. But this thing was just a screamer right across the green, <laughs> and poor guy gets hit in the head. Doesn't go down oh, face first, but goes down on both knees covering his head, and I'm the closest to him, and I scamper over there. I'm like, man, are you okay? He goes, yeah, 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 I think so. (laughs) But to finish off the thought, because as we were getting ready for the podcast, we're joking about this. So once we realized he was okay, then the shenanigans unfolds, right? So later that night, we're all sending memes and gifts and everything we can. You know, the Flintstone episode where Fred, you know, Somebody the must bowling, have dropped the bowling rock ball on falls his head, on his whatever. Head. No, the, the bowling, bowling ball. ball. That's <laughs> falls out of the closet. Hits that's him right, right on the that's head. Right. That's right. But the doctor is the stethoscope, and he's, like, listening to the top of the bump on Fred's head. Okay, Dre. So, anyway, if, if you fair or foul? Is that fair or foul? Oh, 100% <laughs> fair. And if you don't show up <laughs> next year for the first – First round of golf with this guy wearing a helmet, you were dropping the ball. <laughs> First thing I thought of was that well, it's like there's no way you're not wearing a helmet when you're around him. That's amazing. You're talking about the guy who hit the shot when you're around no, him, as the guy, opposed to the no, guy that took no, it in the noodle. The oh, guy okay. that took it in the noodle. I'd I'd have that helmet on right beside him, <laughs> ready to play today. You know what they say: uh, safety never sleeps. Yeah, but in. In his case, it would be one of those gimmick hard hats, right, where you've got the straws and the two beer holders. Uh, so that's what we're going to so, force each other to wear moving now, forward. Now, um, did the guy that hit the ball get a free drop or what happened there? 
Well, that is actually excellent point by you. So none of us saw where the ball went. So I assumed it went in the Caraganas past the green. Like it just ricocheted off Buddy's head into the weeds. So I'm like, well, there's a ball there right at the edge of the, the shrub. That must be it. He goes and he hits it. He walks onto the green. And again, in fairness, my buddy's fully rattled. He just hit another friend in the head with a golf ball. So I'm about ready to putt, I think. And he 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 sees a ball like 25 feet from the hole. He goes, guys, that's my ball. So we're like, yeah, you might as well play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good bounce. So – we didn't penalize him for, for taking the shot off friend's head yeah, to 25 no, no. feet. The only thing that would have made it pure gold, of course, was if he had made the putt because he would have saved par off our yes, friend's That's good melon. stuff. Didn't happen. So there you go. I knew you'd that's appreciate that story. Yeah, that's a, to that's a tough one right nine. there. Minding your own business and, oh, yeah, that one hurts. Into the meat, here we go. Headlines, once again this season, presented by our friends at Boston Pizza. So many directions that we could go. Um, But why don't we start with uh, kind of a fun story, but an impressive one nonetheless, and that's, you know, Phil Kessel, freak of nature. How else do you describe Phil at 35 years of age? Um, The Ironman streak is now his, and um, I don't think this is a bold prediction. I just don't see it ever getting touched. I mean, it's, it's just such an oddity in pro sport in general to play that many games in, in counting. But then, you know, you read the stories, Ray, of the people who have, have interviewed those around Phil in, in preparation for this Ironman, which he now owns. And they all talked about how much candy he eats and the hot dog scarfing, of course. And the fact that he works out. And he'll look, I mean, he looks good in, in Vegas. He looked probably as mm-hmm. good a shape as he's ever been when he arrived in, in Vegas. But, you know, Morgan Riley talked about how incredibly strong he is. And the fitness testing is always, you know, pretty high. Yeah. You know, maybe the, the fat percentage gets a little off track on occasion. But how throwback is Phil Kessel. You know, if you go back in the day when you broke into the National Hockey League, guys like this weren't as rare as Phil Kessel is today. Is that fair? Yeah, well, maybe in the way that their body was shaped. I mean, right now, everybody is, you know, is leaned out and Phil's just not. And the, But what wasn't common is the athleticism that he clearly has. Yeah. There's all kinds of stories about him being able to dunk a basketball, um, being at the very top of um, any leg tests that they do. Um, Mm -hmm. Gary Roberts tells this story that he's, uh, you know, training in their group and they're doing these sled pulls. And, you know, so it's a weighted sled behind you for the first five against like Stamkos and guys like that. Phil's in the front of the pack first. The last five, he's last. So if you're looking for If you're looking for Phil Castle to run a marathon, you probably got the wrong guy. And there's a <laughs> there's this great I you know I know maybe for some people they won't know Earl Campbell, the great Houston Oilers running back. And so at training camp one year he came last in the mile run. I mean the guy was great, <laughs> like Hall of Fame great. Mm-hmm. So they asked his coach, what did he thought of Earl's time in the in the mile run? And he said. What that tells me is if we've got first in a mile, I won't give him the ball. So if you're looking for Phil Kessel to run a marathon, Mm -hmm. wrong guy. (laughs) Phil can skate, he can shoot, he can pass, he can think. (laughs) And apparently, he's a great teammate. Because everywhere he goes, the guys seem to like him. Yeah. (laughs) So it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It really doesn't. If somebody thinks he should be in better shape, too bloody bad. Guy's got a couple of Stanley Cups and he can... Now they're asking him to do a small role in Vegas. He can do that. If you're asking yeah. him to lead your team, he can't do that. It's about understanding what the player is at the time you have him. And his streak yeah. is astounding. Honestly, astounding. Hmm. Felt bad for him, right? I, I certainly uh, understand the challenge of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, it's such a big part of the game, and it was a successful challenge on Phil's 400th goal last night. Uh, but he'll get uh, can there, I butt in and there? who knows? Can I butt in there for yeah, a sec? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Challenge is, that challenge is ridiculous. It's hmm. ridiculous. I, not on Toronto's part, 
The fact that that can be challenged, I think the challenge should be within five seconds of entering the zone. Yeah. Because after that, that play, they didn't even know what they were, like the commentators were talking, both broadcasts, they didn't even know what they were challenging. Because it meant nothing once the play got set up. I, I did, yeah. and, and the reason and I and there think was I a loss of possession in there too, right? There was yes. a loss of possession in there. Yeah. So you could do it on a timer. You could do it on a loss of possession. Anything, but I, I hate that rule. I think it, it is not what happened last night. And again, it's not the least fault, but that's not yeah. the intent of the rule. That's not. And by the way, right. that keeps them nine goals. But that keeps them nine goals behind. Yeah, me. good. <laughs> Which is also uh, important here. Let's yeah. let's not kid ourselves. Let's be honest. Here. Um, <clears throat> we've all had fun with this, but it's a serious consideration. Phil Kessel, Hall of Famer. If it, if he were more of a media darling and embraced the spotlight, I, I don't mm-hmm. even I don't even know that there's a whole lot of debate, right? I mean, the Stanley Cups are there, the longevity is there, the Ironman streak is there. Um, had success, the World Juniors, all that stuff matters. It's the Hockey Hall of Fame, but is he a Hall of Famer for you? I, I'm going to say it? no. Yeah. It's hard. I'm going to say no. I, I don't recall. Has he been an all-star? Like, not the all-star game. Has he been an yeah. end-of-season no, all-star? No, no, no. First Has all-star. he led the league yeah, in goals? Yeah. And and so the answer is mm. no. And so to me, that stuff matters. The Stanley Cup strikes, I'm telling you, matter nothing to me. And the, and the, the reason why is you could be a player, a good player on a Stanley Cup team, or a great player on a team that just doesn't win. Your goalie's not good enough, <laughs> yeah. or... I don't know, you've had injuries, whatever it is. The Stanley Cups are, to me, should not be on the, should not be on the criteria list. Um, Murray Wilson, Doug Wilson's brother, has two Stanley Cups. Should he be in the Hall of Fame? No. Doug Wilson is. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's no disrespect to the, the guys <laughs> that win, but, man, I, I don't know. There's guys that won four Stanley Cups with the Islanders. Should they be in because they won four cups? No. You're in because you're a great player. I think Phil, to my standard, just misses for me. Okay. Uh, You touched on the Leaf game versus Vegas. Did not go well for the Leaf. Sloppy, ugly performance, I would say, is fair for Toronto. Turnovers, mistakes. Uh, Matthews and Marner can't score. The bright spot was the play of Ilya Samsonov. He kept it much closer than the game mm-hmm. actually was. Um, but do you subscribe to the calming sense of it's still early? Don't worry. Austin Matthews is going to start scoring goals again. Mitch Marner is going to chip in with his offense. You've got the Tavares line that's playing pretty well. Or more on the negative side of things, the defensive blunders across the board, not not just the defensive core, but this team defensively and that blue line evidently doesn't appear to be good enough. Well, my concern level of Marner and Matthews is about zero. Uh, of the things yeah. to be concerned about, that's not it. Um, I, I've said since the beginning of the year, as much as we've spent talking about the Leafs goaltending, my concern is their blue line. I just don't think mm-hmm. it's good enough. And – in that first period in particular, um, really m- most of the night, but um, <clears throat> Toronto's defense could not handle Vegas in the middle of the ice. Like their def- their physical, mm-hmm. like the blue, the defensemen couldn't handle. Uh, they couldn't handle Chandler Stevenson. Uh, if there was a give and go and they had to react on the fly, they couldn't do it. Hall gets beat with foot speed, um, but actually made a couple of really good plays. I just don't think in as a group, that that defense is is going to be able to stand up to the best teams. That's that to me is the point of, of concern for me. All right, uh, Vancouver Canucks drop another one, another sketchy third period. So where are we at, Ray? Um, and I'm going to give you three scenarios, and and you want to go off the board and say it's way more than that. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to say a you continue to let it ride. 
and it gets progressively worse, and you have no choice but to embrace what I describe as a hefty renovation, because they've got too many good young pieces to really dive into a rebuild, I think. Um, but maybe they do. So that's A. B would be you find help for that blue line, and good luck doing that, right? Because Anyone who's available probably isn't a significant upgrade. So based on where we're at in the season, that becomes a challenge. Or you look at the new coach or bringing in a new coach. Is it one of those three? Is it all of the above? Is it something else? Well, that's the problem is, is it's kind of all three. I think most of us in life would like everything to be, it's one thing. This is the reason why that happened. The Canucks start mm. is not one thing. It's many things together. The problem is fixing it, again, is not one thing. <laughs> so you can say, yeah, you know, and I hear this all the time, improve the blue line. They should have done it in the summer. If the media guys are talking about improving the blue line, do you think the management has noticed? Of course they've <laughs> noticed. Do you think it's that easy to go out and make a trade? In anything that happens, some guy goes out for lunch and we hear about that they had to send a player down for cap considerations. Nobody has any room to do anything. So if you're going to yeah. renovate the blue line, you're going to have to trade somebody off your roster. You can't bring somebody in, even if you wanted to trade a draft pick, which they don't have very many prospects because they don't have a lot of, they didn't have a lot of picks over the previous five years. So they got to get, picks back mm -hmm. but if you're getting picks back that means you're trading players for picks which means that doesn't help you today the the sorry reality of coaching in a league is if if you can't find the answer they got to find someone that can help find the answer the canucks are paying two mm -hmm. coaches right now travis green and bruce boudreau so it's easy to say it's not your money or my money oh get a new coach well maybe the owner doesn't mm -hmm. want to pay three coaches there's so much that goes into this. They're in a tough spot, Dregs, because without Quinn Hughes, without Travis Dermott, mm -hmm. last night without mm -hmm. Brock Besser, they're a mess. Yeah, they're 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 a mess. They they played that third period um, like a team that was. I've been on those teams. Like you get in, it's one one. You know you're getting outshot, but Carolina does that to a lot of people. Like Carolina's really good. And they outshoot a lot of Just people. Just the way they play. Yeah. Yeah. But before you can even get your second line on the ice, you know, your second shift, it's already 2-1. Mm -hmm. Then you get your, th your, you make a change and now it's 3-1. You're not getting four goals against Carolina very often. Right. And so it's, no. it, it, that <clears throat> game, as, as much as you can say it wasn't played, it flattered them, the score flattered them. At one point it's 1-1. You need to win a crappy game. Right, you yeah. need to win a game where you're getting getting outplayed. And by the way, your goalie was terrific. That's a great sign for them. Mm -hmm. Can they fix it by Thursday? Oh, probably not. But you can start inching your way forward, which is really all they can do right now. All right, uh, let's look at the Chicago Blackhawks, and and we're looking at Chicago because Chicago is winning hockey games. So, you know, is this the old adage that pride can be an incredible motivator? You know, look, Luke Richardson, new head coach in the National Hockey League, I think he's doing a very good job with the Chicago Blackhawks. But you've got castoffs like Tyler Johnson, um, right. Sam Lafferty, Alex Stalock, Peter Morasic in goal. Uh, but the plan isn't to win, right? The plan was or is to be as bad as you can be because the draft in June – is, is chock full of some real good pieces that are going to help you longer term. But when you're dealing with the likes of Patty Kane and Jonathan Taves and some of the high character that they have in that Chicago dressing room, I think pride can be a pretty big motivator. It can, but I wouldn't worry about it yet. 82 mm -hmm. games is a great equalizer. Uh, I don't think they're going to mm -hmm. have to worry about the number of wins they have by the end of this. And if okay. you get into a position that, um, things are going too well. You can fix that too um, mm -hmm. by making a couple of moves. And and I mean, I I see no 
I see nothing that tells me Kane is going to finish the year in Chicago. Like, I just don't know why he would do that. Maybe no. I'm totally wrong, no. but I, I just don't think so. Um, and so you subtract him out for a couple of draft picks and well, there you go. You fix part, you fix part of the problem right there. Do you think Alex Stalock's mm-hmm. going to stop the puck like this the rest of the year? If he does, well, then you can pull the old Buffalo Sabres play from when McDavid and Eichel were in the draft class. Anybody that could stop the puck, they traded them mm-hmm. and they put somebody no. else in there who until eventually got mm-hmm. to a point where nobody could stop it. And then they were right down in the lottery and they lost. And they got Eichel, not McDavid. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's the danger of, of all of that strategy stuff of trying to finish where you, where you want is that it still gets to the lottery. And, you know, I, I, like, I, I understand their plan. Get picks, draft, right. do a good job with development. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think in time this will, this will straighten itself out. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Carey Price made headlines this week, visiting with the available media in Montreal. You know, he still won't say he's done. I mean, why should he? He's a gamer. He has contract left. But he did admit in that media avail, Ray, that day-to-day he's still in pain. Now, he seems at peace, again, based on some of the reporting, when talking about his history, the challenges that he's faced off the ice um, but also discussing the uncertainty of what his path is moving forward. Mm. I mean, man, talk about putting it in simple terms that we can all relate to. You know, he, he literally said, I can't think about returning to the NHL. I don't know if I can return to the NHL. I just want to be able to carry my children up the stairs or down the stairs mm-hmm. pain-free. You know, I, I don't know if we should expect more. How could you possibly expect more? If he could wave the magic wand and say, well, I guess I'm done. Uh, that's the end of my career. Then then he'd do it. it. It still sounds like he's willing to invest whatever he can to see if he can get there. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, he's really the only one that will know. Because if he gets to a point where he's feeling pretty good and he gets on the ice, he might go, wait a minute, I can't even move like I need to move. Yeah. Right. Like it doesn't matter again what anybody else thinks. He has to feel and think that through. The one thing I would always caution somebody making this decision at whatever time in their career is there's going to be a time you're going to be as old as me and you're going to start paying some bills. And yeah. I'm no different than anyone else that I played with. Um, you know, I've got a artificial knee. I had seven knee surgeries, um, got arthritis in my hands. Uh, if the weather changes my right ankle, I can tell you when it's going to change. Like there's some bills to pay, but when you're playing, you don't understand that because the only thing that matters Mm -hmm. is the now. Everything you do is focused around the now. And I totally get that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm glad Carey Price has the time to try and make that decision, but that decision is going to have to come from him, his gut, his heart will tell him what the right move is. Hmm. So many stories around the Montreal Canadiens, around the NHL, in fact. Um, Some of them good, some of them not so good, but we know that there'll be more to dive into in headlines on Thursday in the next episode of the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast. Those are your headlines. Thank you once again to our good friends at Boston Pizza. Hey, thanks for tuning into our YouTube channel. And while you're here, why don't you do us a solid? Hit like and subscribe. Yeah, you'll get access to all the latest uploads. You can stay updated on the latest news and interviews from the Ray and Drags Hockey Podcast. It only takes a couple of seconds. And from what I'm told, it helps with our algorithm thingamajig. Anyway, we appreciate the support.